Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Apostle Chauncey Craig of Discipling Ministries, the place where we're not concerned about a building, but the building of a people. Uh, this is our midday manner, and uh, I'm so glad that you would tune in with us and, um, and know that you, you are a part of it and that you're, you're able to ask questions, you're able to, to inquire uh, why, why we're in the midst of this thing. So, um, again, it's, it's, it's for us. It's, it's a kingdom work. So, once again, thank you so much for calling in. Uh, if you would, uh, we're going to, our, to, to the Word, and we're going back to Galatians, the fifth chapter. Galatians, the fifth chapter. Uh, I want to say approximately two weeks ago, I began to talk about this thing, and we're still there. We're still there. But we're going to Galatians, the fifth chapter. And, and instead of reading all of it, uh, we were really talking about this whole chapter, um, this chapter 5, which is really a, a short chapter, only uh, 26 verses. Um, I say only, um, but maybe that's a lot for some. <laughs> Amen, but I'm just going to say uh, we've really been, we really been dealing with the, the whole chapter, uh, kind of walking our way through it. So, uh, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to read, um, start reading from, from verse 7 today. Verse 7, once again, Galatians 5, beginning at verse 7. It says, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven... A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind. But he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Verse 16, I say then, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And we're calling this, I fought the law in one. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for allowing us to be on this line. We thank you for the ability to hear. And we pray even now that we not only be hearers, but that we be doers of your word. We thank you for sending your word, for it is your word that you're watching over to perform. And we shall walk out your word. We bless you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So once again, we came from, uh, uh, we, we were talking about Galatians 5, and, and I really began to, to emphasize on, on, on the verses uh, prior to verse 7, uh, talking about how, how, how we are to stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. So we've already established that we are free and that, uh, with that word liberty, and that, that we're free, uh, that Christ has made us free. And liberty meaning the power, the authority, and the freedom that Christ has given us. So we are free. And uh, we went on to talk about how we're, how we're not to be uh, uh, entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, we've already established that that yoke of bondage was talking about the law, amen, that we don't want to get stuck, continue to be stuck in the law. It, it, it also talks about, because we said that this is a, a principle, uh, even though they were talking about circumcision, that, but it's a principle to not even get caught up in uh, uh, doctrine, to not even get caught up in, in, in man's traditions or, or, or ways, but we are free, amen. We are, we are at liberty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So, uh, again, we, we, we began today uh, by reading verse 7, and it said, you ran well. <laughs> you ran well. So what, what, what it's telling us is that in, in, as he's talking to the, uh, the Galatian church is that, hey, you, 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 you were being a good Christian.
Christian, as we call them, you you were doing the things that were cor- that that were correct. You were doing the thing that was right in the eyesight of God. You were doing the things that was pleasing to God. But then he goes on to say, "Who hindered you from obeying the truth?" Amen. So, and when we look at the church, we we have to understand that 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 the church began to run well at one time. And when we bring it to reality, at one time we began to really want all of God. We began to really want the things of God. But some kind of way, we find ourselves wanting religion. We find ourselves wanting uh, uh, what the church had to offer. We find ourselves wanting uh, uh, to, to be pleasers of man. In essence, we got away from uh, 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 choosing God. We got away from choosing a relationship with God. So as long as I do what you want me to do, as long as I move how you want me to move, as long as I believe how you want me to believe, then I don't really need a relationship with God. Amen. So something has hindered us. But again, he said you ran well. So at one time, we were running really good. But something hindered us. It said, who hindered you from obeying the truth? And that's a question that we need to ask ourselves. Okay, who hindered me from obeying the truth? What did I allow to get in the way of me obeying the truth? And and, and when we really search, when we really get into all this, it was the law. Amen. It was something. Uh, uh, it, it was something about our traditions. It was something about our doctrine. It was something about our denomination, or whatever the case may be. It was something about our auxiliary. Something about our uh, organization that I began to obey over the truth. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. But he says in verse eight, this persuasion does not come from who calls you. Amen. And see, because what he's telling us is, listen, Jesus is the one that does the calling. And and we have more, unfortunately, we have more dedication. (laughs) We have more, uh, 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 what's the right word? We have more um, responsibility. Amen. We have more dedication, amen, to our organizations, to our denominations, to our doctrine than we do to Jesus Christ, amen, than we do to the one who calls us, amen. But listen to what he says. Once again, verse 8, I didn't make this up. It's in the Word. This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. So my question is, who called us, amen? Who called you, amen? Did, 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 did your organization call you, amen? Did your denomination call you? Amen? Or did Jesus Christ call you? Amen? Who, who called you? Did God call you? Amen? And, and, and again, so that there's a need for us to know who called us because anything that prevents us from obeying the truth does not come from God. Amen? And, and, and I, I believe there, there, there's a large majority of us that really feel like we're doing right because we obey in these old-fashioned traditions, that we obey in these old laws that somebody done laid down. Obeying... This, this, this old stuff that someone has laid down for us, amen? But it, And we get so caught up into obeying those things that we forget the one that really called us. Yes. Hallelujah, somebody. Any questions or comments? I fought the law in one. I fought the law in one, amen? Now let's pick up in verse 9. He says, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Amen. But basically what, what he's telling us is, hey, listen, a little sin, hallelujah, a, 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 a little white lie or a little of your tradition or a little of your uh, 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 tenets of faith, if you will, a little bit of your uh, uh, doctrine, false doctrine, amen, will, will leaven the whole loaf, amen. It'll mess up everything. Hallelujah. And we'll find ourselves messed up, amen, in forgetting who called us. Amen. Because I'm telling you, there's a scripture that talks about the the one that the, the, the philosopher, the one that's who, who's deceit, who's deceitful in their speech, the one that's that, that's cunning. Amen. How they can tell us some stuff and get us off course. But if we if 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 we stick with the one that called us, if we know the voice of God, we won't be so easily moved, and He won't have to say you ran well, you was doing good for a while, but all of a sudden you got tired. Amen. All of a sudden you you was hindered. So so someone hindered you from obeying the truth. Amen. But again, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So uh, remember this today. I fought the law in one. I fought the law in one. But look at verse 10. He says, I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind. But he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. 
But listen to what he said. He said, even though you ran well and you got off course, he was. He, he said, hey, even the one that that, that 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 persuaded you, I'm telling you, he's not from God. He said, but uh, some kind of way we allowed a little a little leaven, some way we allowed a little sin, some way we we uh, uh, or sin we allowed a little uh, uh, deceit, we allowed a little deception, we allowed a little twist of the truth, amen, to get us off course. Amen, to, to, to mess up the whole lump. But he said, but listen, listen I, I, I got you. He said, but I got confidence. I got confidence in you. In other words, I, 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 I believe, I, I, I have confidence, I trust that you won't because you came in with the right, you, you ran well, so you, you, you had a desire to please God. You had a desire to run, with, to, run, to run for God, to walk in the spirit. You had a desire to do it. And you, yeah, you got a little bit off course, but I got confidence, I got trust that you're going to return. Like, I trust that you're going to return to your first love. I, I, I believe it's going to happen. He said, I got confidence in you, in the Lord. Amen. I got confidence in you. Amen. I got in the Lord that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you will bear his judgment, whoever he is. And that person is going to bear the judgment. Amen. Whoever got you off course. Amen. So there's a need for them to repent. Amen. Just as well as you. Amen. But I got confidence that you're going, that you're going to turn this thing around. Somebody say, I fought the law in one. Hallelujah. Amen. So we pick up in verse 11. They say, and I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Amen. He says, then the offense of the cross has ceased. But he says this because, again, it, it, you got to remember, this is a letter. This is a letter that, 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 that the apostle is writing to the church, so he's not there. It's a letter. So what he's saying, basically what he's saying is, hey, listen, somebody that, 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 that heard it said that, that, that uh, uh, and you don't read it here, but I, I need you to grab this. What, what he's saying is uh, somebody ha, 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 has, it's been reported to me. <laughs> basically what he said, it's been reported to me that you think that I'm the one that circumcised Timothy. <laughs> That's what you think. You you think because I circumcised Timothy that that uh, that I'm saying that circumcision is the way to go. But I'm telling you, Amen. Uh, if that's true, why do I still suffer persecution? <laughs> amen. So in other words, if I'm still doing what you're doing, why are you persecuting me? So it can't be true, Amen. Now we do know that 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 Timothy was a son to him, Amen. And that's that's a subject that's that's a subject for another time. But the thing that he's trying to tell us is is that's not true. Your circumcision is not going to justify you, amen. The works of the law is not what's going to justify you, amen. He said, because if that's the case, then the offense of the cross has ceased. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. I fought the law in one. Verse 12, I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. In other words, they, 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 they done got you off course. They're telling you these lies. They're giving you some false doctrine. I, I really wish they would just, they would just quit it. I, I wish they would just stop with all that foolishness. Amen? Amen. Verse 13, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Hallelujah. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. In other words, you're free. You're free from the law. You're free from, 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 from all the nonsense. You're free from all the foolishness. You're free from the law. You're free from observing what everybody else says, that you, that you got to do this, that you, that you can't do that, that it has to be this way, that you got to do it like that, that you got to turn around that like this. You gotta, matter of fact, let's do this. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. I'm going back to, to, to another scripture. I'm, I'm going to Colossians. I'm going to Colossians. Amen. I, I, I want to put this in your hearing. Amen. I'm going to Colossians. Colossians 2. And then I'm going to jump back over. Amen. Colossians 2. Colossians 2. Let's look at verse, uh, let's look at verse 15. Let's look at verse 15. Colossians 2, verse 15. It says, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Amen. This is Jesus. Amen. He triumphed over them. Amen. So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come. But the substance is of Christ. Again, the, the, the writer is telling us, he's telling us, hey, man, don't let nobody judge you with the food or drink. He said, don't let nobody judge you regarding festivals or new moons or Sabbaths. In other words, don't let nobody judge you in their legalism. Don't let nobody judge you by way of the law. Amen. I can't.
came to fulfill the law. Amen. Jesus came to fulfill it. And we, 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 we get the gift of having the Holy Ghost with us. Amen. He has already fulfilled the law. So hey, hey, don't let nobody judge you by all this other foolishness. Amen. That's saying, hey, that, that everything is ceremonial, that everything is ritualistic, that everything is, is, is uh, uh, legal. Amen. But, but I'm free. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm free to worship him in spirit. In truth, amen, I'm, I'm here to work. I, I can worship him. It's not about being caught up in all of the legalism of all of the stuff that people have assigned, amen. Amen, you go over here to this church, amen, they say you got to do it like this. You go over here, you got to do it like that. You go over here, you got to, amen, I, 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 I get it. I know people got some different things, but the bottom line that, that we need to understand that is that, that Christ is the substance. Hallelujah. We need to have to let people know they need to have a relationship with God. They need to have a relationship with God. They need to have a relationship with God. Amen. And that relationship with God is more important than doing all these steps that, that people say we have to go through, that all of these processes that people say we have to go through. Amen. We need to have a relationship with God and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, amen, instead of getting caught up into all of these other uh, 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 festivals and, 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 and uh, rituals and, and all of the, uh, whether, whether you, 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 you should uh, worship God on Sunday or whether you should worship him on Saturday, amen, whether you should, whether you should be this or whether you should be that, amen. Christ is is the substance. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue to read. That was verse 17. Amen. I'm still in Colossians 2. He said, let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, a fleshy mind. Amen. In other words, don't let no preacher run up on you telling you all this old false stuff. Puffed up in his own mind, just just because he thinks he done got some uh, a revelation, because he don't think he got something uh, uh, something uh, else. But again, it's his fleshy mind. Hallelujah! You, we need to understand that we are free. Hallelujah! And not holding fast to the head. Amen. They work it in their fleshly mind instead of holding on to Christ. People need to know they need to have a relationship with God. Amen. Their relationship need to be uh, uh, need to be so 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 tight in God that it, it needs to. In the relationship with God needs to be above. Amen. Their church need to be above their organization. Need to be above their bishop. Need to be above their apostle. Need to be above what the prophets say. Amen. The relationship with God is the substance. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the substance. The substance is of Christ, not our organizations. I fought the law in one, even the law of our organizations. Amen. I'm going to drop down a little bit because I need us to grab this. Amen. Listen to what he says here. He says, uh, uh, verse 20, he says, Therefore, if you die with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, amen, if we die with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? In other words, why do we subject ourselves to regulations? Why do we subject ourselves to all this law, uh, 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 religious law? <laughs> why do we subject ourselves to what people say, some old, some old doctrine or some old tradition that people have made up? Why do we subject ourselves to that stuff? Do not touch this. Do not taste that. Do not handle this, which all concern things which perish with the using, amen, according to the commandments and doctrines of men, amen. It's all about men. It's all about the commandments and the doctrine, amen. The command, what the commandments say, what the doctrine, what Jesus said, I'm free. Hallelujah. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom. Listen to what it is. They have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Amen. That stuff don't do nothing for you. You need to understand that you're free, and you better have a relationship with God. I fought the law in one. Why? Because I have the Holy Ghost living on the inside of me. Amen. The Holy Ghost is holy. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. The Holy Ghost is holy. The Holy Ghost is holy. Let's go back, amen, to uh, 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 Galatians 5. Say it with me again. Say the Holy Ghost is holy. Hallelujah. Amen. And because we have the Holy Ghost, amen, because we have the Holy Ghost, let's look what he says again. I'm going to read verse 13, Galatians 5, verse 13. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. 
and do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. Amen. But through love, serve one another. Amen. That go that word love. Amen. There it is again. Amen. But he's but he, and he's talking. He's relating this thing to the flesh. Amen. Remember, he talked about a fleshy mind, a fleshy mind. Amen. Instead of be, instead of uh, observing the Godhead. Amen. Instead of observing the One. Hallelujah. But he says, only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. So yeah, you have freedom. Amen. Yes, you have power. Yes, you have authority. But for what? It's not for the flesh. It's for the things of the spirit. Amen. He said, but through love, serve one another. So now, even though I may not like you, even though you, we may not attend the same type church. Amen. We may not have the same type of, of, of understanding of scripture. Amen. We may not agree. Amen. Whether, whether you, you're supposed to speak in tongues. But you, we may not agree on all those things. Amen. But I now have the power to love you. I now have the authority to love you. I now have power over my flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To serve you by serving one another. Amen. Through love, I'm able to serve you despite our differences, despite that. Hallelujah, somebody. He said, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Hallelujah. So I don't care what church you go to. Can you love me? Amen. I don't care what you can, can. Can you fight the law and win and still love me? Hallelujah, somebody. Can you fight the law? Can, can you go against your traditions? Can you go against your, your principles, amen, by, and, and let the Holy, the Holy God, the Holy Spirit, love the Holy Spirit in someone else, amen? Can you fight the law and win? Glory to God, somebody. Amen? He says, but, but it, it, it goes on to say, but if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. And I'm telling you, there's a whole lot of consuming going on. Amen? We have become carnivores, eating up each other. Amen? Beating up each other. Amen? Because we don't, because we don't, uh, because we caught up, amen, in our doctrines. Amen? We caught up in our uh, 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 denominational beliefs. Amen? We're devouring one another. We're eating up one another, amen, hallelujah, but we need to remember, hallelujah, that, that Christ, amen, is the substance, Jesus is the substance, he is the foundation of it all, amen, and we're to love one another, amen, we need to get away from the law, we need to get away from our traditions, we need to get away from our doctrines, amen, and we need to know that we are free from all that old religious uh, 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 rhetoric, hallelujah, somebody, amen, but I love how what it says right here, verse 16, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust, uh, uh, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Amen? So if we know that we're not under the law, amen, if we're truly led by the spirit, we know that we're not under the law. It's right here in the word. Amen. The Romans also tell us, amen, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Amen. So we know if we're led by the Spirit, then we're not under the law. So why do we still, as Colossians said, why do we still fall up under these regulations of men? Why do we still fall up under the regulations of the world? Why do we still fall up under, again, the traditions and doctrines of man? Stuff people are made up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? But I need us to know today. That I fought the law in one. Now, he goes on to say in verse 19, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, such hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts, or wrath, selfish ambition, decision. And many of us will never say that this is me. Many of us will never say this is me. But I promise you, from church to church, different organizations, we, we are walking in these are, uh, fleshly things are evident in us because some of us don't even recognize other people in the faith. If they don't do it like us, then they ain't saved. If they don't do it like us, then they, ain't, then they all going to hell. If they don't pray like this, if they don't walk like this, if they don't talk like this, but again, selfish ambitions, dissensions, hallelujah. It's right here. It's in there. It's in there. Hallelujah. Amen. But I, 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 again, I want to let us know that I fought the law in one. I fought the law in one. And before we get drop off the line, amen, let's go to Romans uh, 14. Amen. Let's go to Romans 14. I want to, I want to drop this in your hearing, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to move on. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 14. Romans 14. Verse 5. It says, one person 
esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. <laughs> he who observes the day observes it to the Lord. And he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord. For he gives God thanks. And he who does not eat to the Lord, he does not eat and give God thanks. Amen. So what are you talking about? What, what, what does that have to do with anything, preacher? What, what are you, I'm telling us that, hey, that if that's the way that, 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 that you have decided that, hey, that, that your Saturday, amen, is your, is your Sabbath or that your Sunday is your Sabbath or that every day is your Sabbath, amen, you be convinced. You be convinced in your own mind. And whatever you observe, observe it unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Observe it, observe it, observe it. Do what you do. Amen. One may feel it this way, another may feel it this way. But observe what you do. Amen. Be convinced in your own mind and do what you do. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Now, even when we begin to talk about, hey, that, 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 that I just believe like this, I just believe. But see, this has nothing to do with the law. Amen. Don't force me to live by your laws. Don't, don't force me to say that I have to be this way or I have to be that way. I can't do this. I can't do that. Let the Lord lead us. Amen. Once again, the Holy Ghost is holy. And because the Holy Ghost is holy, if it's leading me, I am going to live a holy and righteous life. Hallelujah, somebody. And when I get off course, it's going to convict me. Amen. And I'm going to repent and get back on track. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. But I got to first know the Lord. Uh, 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 it's greater than my organization. It's greater than, I, than my denomination. It's greater than the law. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. I fought the law in one. 